Hello and welcome to another reading vlog. If you hear purring, it's because there's a kitty cat right here. You can kind of see her. My name is Angel. Welcome to another reading vlog. I am going to be doing a 24 to 36 hour readathon here on the channel. Thank you for the cat hair bento. And I did this mostly just because I didn't want to mention it like live. This is going to be posted after the fact, but Jose is going away for the weekend. And so I have the house to myself uh, currently today, Friday through like the end of day on Monday. And I had to go to my grandmother's house, but starting tomorrow and Saturday until about Sunday, 2, p 2 p.m. So like two to two, I'm going to be doing this readathon with myself. <laughs> I have created a very unofficial bingo board of things that I think are really attainable and I've created a TBR so I'm going to go over that now talk very briefly about the books because there are a lot of them um, if you're not interested in hearing the TBR though and you just want to see the vlog I will put timestamps down below and I'll also like put chapters on the video I have a section for books that are under 100 pages books that are about 100 pages to 250 pages graphic novels and manga and audiobooks books that are under 100 pages all of these are ebooks that I own and the first one is Into the Grey by Margaret Kiljoy I believe this is about a murderous gay mermaid i think that's right and then after that i'm gonna be doing beyond the dragon's gate by yoon ha lee because this one is about a former academic <laughs> named anna and her research in ai costs her everything and now years later the military needs to use her in order to prevent destruction of their own ai powered fleet the girlfriend's guide to the gods or to gods this is by maria devonna Headley, who wrote the new translation of beowulf gods won't save you gods will break you nevertheless you will persist and become anew this is the first myth that your boyfriend from when you were 15 will come and get you out of hell he might come but he won't get you and then after that are the books in that like 100 page to about 250 pages. The first one being The Need by Helen Phillips. This is about a woman who is babysitting or maybe she's with her daughter home alone. It appears as if there's like a home intruder, but Sage recently read it and said that it has like a sci-fi twist. I'm also going to be reading Their Troublesome Crush by Zan West. In this queer polyamorous male-female romance novella, two metamors realize they have crushes on each other while planning their shared partner's birthday party. And then there's also, I feel like this is just a lot of like queer books that I got from one of Sage's videos a long time ago and it's all coming to fruition, so I'm so excited. The next one is Transgalactic Bi Bike Ride, which I believe is a collection of stories, queer stories. Um, says feminist bicycle science fiction stories of transgender and non-binary non -binary adventurers. Next little section is graphic novels. Um, I said and manga, but there aren't any manga on here. Um, one of them I'm borrowing from the library as a physical copy that is a map to the sun. And it says one summer day, Ren meets Luna at a beachside basketball court and a friendship is born. But when Luna moves back to Oahu, Ren's messages to her friend go unanswered. Years go by and then Luna returns home to rekindle their friendship. Ren is hes hesitant. She's dealing with a lot including family troubles dropping grades and the newly formed women's basketball team at their high school and the next one is like completely different but it is by one of my favorite uh, graphic novel artists and this is sherlock Frank frankenstein oh my gosh i can't speak and this is illustrated by david rubin it says this mystery set in a world of superheroes follows a reporter investigating what happened to her father the black hammer all answers seem to lie in spiral city's infamous insane asylum where some of the most dangerous supervillain tenants reside next and last section is audiobooks again i don't expect to read all of these but i was looking for things that would take like less than four hours to listen to and i do listen on two times speed so these are all books that are in hoopla that I plan to try to read. Um, the first one I actually have downloaded to start reading tomorrow on my drive back from my grandmother's house and that is The Hole by Hai Young Pyun. In this tense gripping novel, Ogi ha has woken from a coma after causing a devastating car accident that took his wife's life and left him paralyzed and badly disfigured. His caretaker is his mother-in-law, a widow grieving the loss of her only child. Ogi is neglected and left alone in his bed. I also have The Switch by Beth O'Leary. Lena is ordered to take a two-month sabbatical after blowing a big presentation at work. She escapes to her grandmother Eileen's house for some overdue rest. Lena proposes a solution, a two-month swap. Eileen can live in London and look for love. Meanwhile, Lena will look after everything in rural Yorkshire. Echo White by Sarah Gailey. So it says, Martine is a genetically cloned replica made from Evelyn Caldwell's award-winning research. She's patient and gentle and obedient. She's everything Evelyn swore she'd never be. And she's having an affair with Evelyn's husband. And another short story collection I want to read is going to be Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability, and Making Space. This is a non-fiction collection of, I believe, essays talking about cartoons in that way, as well as just general fairy tales are taking advantage of the reality of 
people that have disabilities and making it into this like magical thing or something that you can fix or cure or that it needs to be cured. And so this is Hot and Badgered by Shelley Laurenston. This is a badger shifter romance book about a woman who is a badger shapeshifter. They shapeshift into a badger and their father is I think trying to kill their family or get the family killed and they are now turning to this man who I believe is a grizzly bear shapeshifter to help figure out the problem. That being said, I need to get back to work now, but I'm going to touch base with you tomorrow once I've actually started reading. I'm going to start the audiobook of The Hole on the drive back and finish the majority of it, and then we'll get into some of the challenges. If you're interested in all that and you listen to all that, thank you, and on to the vlog. We have six minutes until I need to start this 24 hour readathon. I'm gonna be driving. I actually just left my grandmother's house, and so, sorry for the weird angle, I'm in a parking lot, but Let's get going on this first book. I am gonna be starting with The Hole, and this I have on audiobook, I believe through Hoopla, if I can find the damn app on my phone. I'm also going to start a 24 hour timer on my phone. My plan is that I'm gonna probably read until at least 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, so Sunday. And it makes me laugh because I just realized, I think yesterday or today, that the Dewey's 24 hour readathon is also happening, which was not intentional. So um, starting right now, I have our 24 hour readathon starting. I will see you once I get home in, I want to say another like 45 minutes or so. Let's get into this readathon. It is about three o'clock now, just after, and I'm home. I'm charging my headphones because um, I got about two hours into the audiobook for the whole. And oh my gosh, <laughs> that book is pretty dark so far. Um, we're in the point of view of a man who. Like from the beginning, like he's waking up from a coma and he was in a car accident that was fatal for his wife and he is now paralyzed from the neck down. Well, no, he's like completely paralyzed except for his eyes and he can't speak. And it's really dark because there are times when he is dealing with his own like will to live and doesn't feel motivated. But I'm gonna put a bunch of stuff right now in the freezer cause I just got home and my grandmother of course gave me like a bunch of food and I'm gonna put my earbuds in and continue reading. And then once I'm settled here, I'll update. I did like, like um, I'm doing a Twitter like thread of like how things go hour by hour. I also got a package from, it was Gloria, but I got a package all the way from Spain. <laughs> it is an Etsy package that I ordered. So once I'm settled, I will update you guys and show you what I got. I'm super excited. A little bit more settled now. I have my caffeine. I've become caffeinated. I'm gonna bell full of sugar. That's pleasant. I just wanna look at my bingo board, see how I'm doing. I left the house. I, I actually started this readathon outside of the house, so I'm including that. Listen to an audiobook. I have socialized online. I think I sent. I've tweeted, but I also have uh, sent Michaela at least a message since this started. I've caffeinated, I posted about my reading online, and yeah, that's it for now. <laughs> but it is a start, and that's exactly why I did these um, challenges, because I knew that they would be pretty easy for me to accomplish today. It's kind of built into how I want this day to go. I did want to open that package. I believe I got a print and some stickers. It was quite a while ago though, so I'm not 100% sure. Oh man, okay. They packaged it so like, look at the little packaging. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm gonna try to delicately extract. I know, I, I know I'm not gonna be able to not rip these or like I'm just gonna toss this out after, but I just think it's so sweet. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the first thing I got are these Sea Pals and they're these little underwater creature. Oh my God, I can't think of the word, but it's gonna be like plastered all over the screen right now. And there's two little stickers for those and I think they're gorgeous. And then the print I got is what I got it for. Like, I'm just so excited for this. So this, oh, which they actually put onto this like backing, is just this beautiful print of like a tree house. And again, I will have a much more uh, detailed view. It's a little like tree house with like, oh my God. Oh my God. It's just so freaking cute. I'm gonna frame this. I need to find a frame for it. Um, and I'm gonna open up the little extra. I think like they package things with like some extra stickers. Oh, 
yay, there's like some extra stickers in here. That's so freaking cute. It had like a little something for you. Ooh, oh my gosh. Ah, I'm gonna freaking cry. Little, little cactus and some other stickers. Oh my God, this one's so cute. It's like a little plant. I got a little cat in a box and a little lemon and a little earth. And a little book. Oh my god, I love this book. Like, if you just put this on, like, a new bullet journal, you're set. I am... Let's see if you can see. Um, I am about two in, two hours and 40 minutes into the hole. That sounded nasty. <laughs> I have an hour and a half left, which is... Oh my god, I can't. <laughs> it's 45 minutes. I had to do math. Um, and then I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. I have my Kindle with all of my like ebooks on it and then I have my phone with some more audiobooks. So I think I'm going to literally just spend the next hour and a half post it up, <laughs> listen to that audiobook. I guess it's only the next 45 minutes. And then um we're gonna talk about it. But I do have one thought before I go read again. So I don't believe we actually know the man, the main character's name is OG. I don't think we know his wife's name. They just keep saying OG's wife, OG's wife, his wife. At this point, the mother-in-law is a big part of his life as like a live-in caretaker and is kind of taking advantage of him now that he is um, like disabled. Ugh, that's, that's in and of itself, it's really uncomfortable. And then you're also seeing these flashbacks and like uh, OG is talking about his life like internally having these memories of his wife like having a garden and kind of talking down about her and how she wanted this garden and it was a waste of time and she would ask for his help or she would ask him like, oh, do you remember what this is called? And he's like, oh, what a waste of time. And I'm just like, it's so rude, especially because he always talks about how he himself felt like he was wasting time and then like, he just found that his degree was not useful and so he struggled with his own internalized problems with not feeling like he was making a difference and so it just seems so like stupid that now he's like oh well my wife like pff, you know doing women things so i'm gonna finish this and i'm gonna do color by numbers and then I'm gonna do another twi twitter check-in in a minute and i will see you soon um <laughs> i just finished sorry the weird um what Okay, I just finished. <laughs> I just finished the hole. Excuse me? What just happened? Um, I think that's a. Uh, no, it's like a 2.5 out of 3 bentos. Holy crap. Okay. That accelerated like really quickly in the last like hour of the audiobook. But the synopsis is meant to let you think that we should feel bad for this man. And like. <laughs> Throughout the course of the book, things just unravel where it's like no one's perfect. And like, it, that was a rough book. And like, that got pretty intense at the end. But I really enjoyed it. I want to be better prepared for what comes next because my gosh, like, oh God, I'm so sorry. You're getting like a weird angle. I need a book that'll be more uplifting. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna start reading some of these short stories. I have Into the Gray, Beyond the Dragon's Gate, and The Girlfriend's Guide to the Gods. All of those together are less than 100 pages. So I'm gonna start on those next. Let's just do them in the order that I have them listed. I'm gonna read Into the Gray by Margaret Kiljoy. I recently read The Lamb Will Slaughter the Lion by Margaret Kiljoy and did that whole vlog on it and I had a great time. I have a good feeling about it and I believe it is about some sort of like murderous lesbian mermaid, is that right? Let's dive into reading. I will let you know what I think of Into the Gray shortly. See you soon. I don't think it's in the cards for me to read a happy book right now. <laughs> I finished Into the Gray and I'm gonna give it a two out of three bentos. I enjoyed it, but it was not what I thought it was gonna be. Oh, let me get into my blanket and talk to you. <laughs> it's about a trans woman who has been bringing men to this lady of the water female mermaid in this pond and um it's every few years and she eats it and she's in love they're, they're in love or so i mm, the trans woman is in love with the woman in the water and they yeah the lady in the water kills and hi hi what's wrong i'm right here oh she's having a tantrum she kills the man and eats him and then they like have sex and then the woman is like 
so I we need to be together like I want to be with you like if I could find a, a way to be with you is that okay but like the whole time I'm just sitting here and I'm like I don't think this lady in the water wants you <laughs> so let's get the next book going that is going to be Beyond the Dragon's Gate by Yoon Ha Lee. This one again is like 25 pages at most, so gonna dive into it and let you know. I, I honestly don't, I think this is the one where it's like about AI. So let me read this and I'll tell you what it's about afterward. So I finished two, um, two of my short story things here since I last talked to you. First one being Beyond the Dragon's Gate. And that one, I'm giving a two out of three bentos. <laughs> I feel like at this point, my enjoyment scale is like, if I read it, I enjoyed it. It is what it is. But I really liked that one because it was dealing with AI and the concept of AI being people <laughs> and how they are very much alive. There are these ships that have AI on them and are running them. And I think the ship itself is AI and something's happening where they're, I guess, sabotaged. And so they brought Anna in to try to help with that. And I felt like it could have been an entire novel. The interface they had with the AI was super cool, which reminded me a lot of Escaping Exodus and how there was this like transference of your mind. I also finished, I already forget what it's called, but it was the Maria Devana Headley one, The Girlfriend's Guide to the Gods. And I felt like I was left out of an inside joke. I have read a lot of other stories about gods. I didn't, I just didn't like the point of view that this had. This is about, um... I'm not going to say what, but it's about, let's say it's about this girl and you're going through these relationships with these gods and it's putting like a very modern spin on them, which is something that I saw in the Beowulf retelling as well, which is really interesting, making it more modern, making it kind of like self-deprecating and also like self-referential. But I just didn't feel like it needed to be like, granted, it was like 30 pages, but I felt like it could have been a poem. There was some really beautiful imagery and I felt like some of the lines really hit well, but I didn't think it needed to be this long. I'm going to give that one a 1.5 out of three bentos because it was just okay. And I found myself about halfway through kind of drifting. Like I would just think about other things and I wasn't really interested anymore. The next shortest thing that I have is Their Troublesome Crush by Zan West. Or I could read a graphic novel, which should be relatively quick. And so the physical one I have here is A Map to the Sun. Just love the the colors. Like it just goes, oh, that's beautiful. Let's try to read this. It is about like 350 pages. So I might read some of this and then come back to it. Quick check-in. This is actually really awesome. Like I, did, I thought it was gonna be hard to portray colors and like, I don't know. It, it's very weird because parts of it are very monochromatic. And then it will kind of shift and have like a little bit of pop of color. And I just want to show you, this has nothing to do with that, but it just made me laugh. This line, she's trying on clothes and she's like, oh, nothing looks good on me. Yeah, it's kind of cute. Oh my God, I love this color. And then she goes, hey, are you going to get them? My boobs look like mashed potatoes in this. <laughs> Girl. But also like, I feel you. <laughs> All right. It is 10 o'clock. We have how much time on the clock? <laughs> We still have about 15, I don't know if it's gonna focus on that, but we still have about 15 hours and 45 minutes left. I have finished A Map to the Sun. This was just so good and I'm having, oh my God, it was unexpectedly great and it has a lot of trigger warnings in it, but it is about, it's not, it's not as gay as I thought it was gonna be. In reality, it's just about a group of girls who are on this school's first, at least it sounds like it's their first girls sports team and they make a basketball team. It's just experiences that kids in high school can come across and they're all from different backgrounds and um, all have different struggles and I just think it was amazing. I think I'm actually going to buy a copy of this because this one is from the library. I'm currently um, on my Kindle reading their Troublesome Crush right now and um, I just thought it was super, Oh my god. Okay, so I talked about this a bit on the str on the sprints that I did because I just finished those. That's why I'm here to check in. <laughs> it's just it's just really sweet and I really like it so far. I'm about 22% in, but as you could tell from my bingo board, the things that I haven't done are take a nap, sleep, and uh, take a food break. I have not really taken a full break from reading since two o'clock. So that's about eight hours. I'm gonna find some food. I'm gonna turn on YouTube and I'm gonna do what I usually do all the time, just watch YouTube and catch up on that. I'm gonna try to stay up and finish um, their troublesome crush on my Kindle, but I'm gonna give myself 45 minutes. So like at 11 o'clock, I'm gonna get back into reading and just like take a break, take a chill moment to not have my eyes like burrowed into a book. All right, filming in bed, which I never do. Um, it's just me and Miss Little Bento here. 
and um, it's about midnight, so it's like an hour after I said I was gonna read until. Oh, I'm just checking in with Jose, and I think he's going back to his hotel now, but I'm gonna get back into their troublesome crush, and um, I heard some really good things when I was talking on the live stream from a few people about it being really good poly rep and really good BDSM and kink rep in a way that talks about it in not like the sexual way, which is oftentimes like what is portrayed. Uh, Jose and I are texting about poops right now, if that is of interest to you. But yeah, I got Ben to here. She's never really in the bed, I think, because this is like night number two where Jose has not been here. She's probably a little weirded out, which is okay. I enjoy having her in the bed with me. I'm actually gonna have New Girl on as my background sound, I guess. I'm gonna keep the light on because we don't have like a cute lamp right now. And I have a feeling if I just like do it by like the light of my Kindle, I'm probably gonna fall asleep. So I'm gonna keep the light on for a little bit, cuddle with Miss Bento because I think she's having some separation anxiety. And then if, as long as I don't like fall asleep before uh, tonight ends, I will like have another little check-in, let you know where I'm at. We have about 14 hours left. That seems like so many, but I will probably sleep like eight hours, so it's really not that many. Okay, it's about one o'clock, and I think I'm finally starting to doze off while reading. I only made it to page, uh, to chapter, nope to 44% and so I'm definitely gonna like stop for the night before I pass the heck out and I will see you in the morning but again I'm still really enjoying it and I feel like I don't know I just it's an interesting point of view and like I really like Ernest as a character um, and I like being able to get their perspective as a neurodivergent character and like see how easily they're like misinterpreting things or like how their relationship is growing because they're like i just don't understand can you like re-explain that to me and um so far nora is extremely understanding and willing obviously willing and it's just like yeah of course like let's talk it through this way and like um there was a scene where ernest had like anxiety attacks uh, like surrounding just like a weird interaction with them and it, it's just all, it's so real, and I'm really enjoying how open characters are. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go to bed now, and I will see you once I wake up in the morning. I might go grab breakfast, depending on how I feel, or I might just have a coffee. So we'll, we'll sort that out in the morning. Um, oh gosh, yeah, definitely ready for bed. Good morning. I <laughs> am a little puffy, because that's how I generally am in the morning. But I have my breakfast set up. I'm gonna have some toast with jelly and butter and... I also have a coffee and some bacon. I'm at 45% right now and I'm gonna keep reading that while I eat. I have about five and a half hours left, which isn't a lot. But my plan is that I want to finish The Troublesome Crush, then I want to read Frankenstein, uh, Detective Frankenstein or whatever that's called, Sherlock Frankenstein, which is a graphic novel, should be a very quick read. And then I'm gonna try to read Disfigured, but it seems unlikely at this point. I just finished The Troublesome Crush and I'm giving this a two out of three bentos. It was so fun. I felt like it was so educational and eye-opening and I found it super interesting to learn more about like dom-sub relationships and non-sexual kink and also like more levels of consent. I don't know, it made me think a lot about my own like sexuality and how I interpret, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> so I have about four hours left and I think the last title I'm going to read is that Sherlock Frankenstein graphic novel on my laptop. It doesn't put a lot of pressure on me to like finish a new thing, which is exactly what I need right now because I like really, mm, I really don't want to start something and not finish it today. I'd rather like have this be a very clean, like beginning to end vlog. So I'm gonna go take a shower now. I have Miss Bento in my lap, which means that I need to disturb her but I need to go wash off my face. I feel dirty and gross right now. We are here now in the kitchen. I am showered, I promise, and I'm pulling up my graphic novel on my laptop because I have that ability. <laughs> Look at that huge screen. So I have Sherlock Frankenstein in the biggest screen possible. I really like being able to do this with my laptop just because it makes me feel like I have the physical graphic novel in front of me. But I have a huge thing of Mountain Dew here. Don't ask, my grandmother got it for me this weekend. <laughs> so I'm gonna drink that while I'm reading this and I will touch in and give you my final thoughts.
I just finished Sherlock Frankenstein and um, I feel like the description that was actually written for like the hoopla notes was not entirely accurate. It's about this black girl. Her father was this superhero called the Black Hammer. And 10 years before the graphic novel starts, he went missing slash died um, in this big cataclysmic event. The daughter is led to believe that maybe they're not dead, they're actually missing. And so she's trying to hunt down like this super villain called Sherlock Frankenstein. It was great, I actually really enjoyed this and I'm probably gonna continue with the series, but I still have two and a half hours left. And so I was like, screw it. I'm gonna look on Hoopla, see if they have anything available for under that amount of time. And I found Convenience Store Woman, which used to be on my TBR and then I took it off. However, the audiobook is three and a half hours long. So that means which means it's about an hour and 45 minutes long for me in two times speed. It says it's a 36 year old Tokyo resident Kiko or Kaiko has never fit in neither in her family nor in school. But when the age of 18, she begins working at the uh, Hiromachi branch of national convenience store chain Smile Mart. She realizes instantly that she has found her purpose in life, delighted to be able to exist in a place where the rules of social, interac social interaction are crystal clear. Many are laid out line by line in the store's manual, and she does her best to copy the dress mannerisms and mode of speech of her colleagues, playing the part of a normal person excellently less, uh, more or less. I think she might be neurodivergent. I'm not sure. There's something about the description where she's like, you need to be a normal person, and she really enjoys the rules of things. We're gonna download it and see how that goes. I'm excited that I can get one more thing in, even though it technically wasn't on my TBR, like in general, like overall, like it's not on my Goodreads TBR, it is now. But I just wanna squeeze one more book in. I wanna squeeze a book in. I'm gonna skip that last task of taking a nap because I just don't have it in me to take a nap in like half an hour, but one more book it is. So I will see you after I finish this one. And that one I will give a two out of three bentos because it was just so good, like, excuse me so that was about a woman who is definitely neurodivergent but it's never like it's never explicitly said they took this character to a, a doctor when they were younger and even the doctor was like you know like it is what it is and they didn't i don't know if they just didn't have the ability to diagnose them this woman now has a job where she feels like she's doing very good at a convenience store and she feels very happy and content in this lifestyle but people around her don't see her as fulfilled they constantly ask her like oh are you getting a real job are you going to settle down and have a family when are you having children like oh you're just working at the convenience store and so it's a lot of people being very ableist toward her and imposing their own thoughts on what her life should be as a woman as a human being in general kind of did some math in my bullet journal on what i read for the readathon so i read a lot of books let's go over because i don't remember and <laughs> Honestly, I don't even remember what I rated some of these. So, yes. First book I read was The Whole, which I read an audio, but if you translate it into like a physical paperback, it was 137 pages. Also read Into the Gray. This was 22 pages as an ebook. I read Beyond the Dragon's Gate, 32 pages as an ebook. The Girlfriend's Guide to Gods was 32 pages as well as an ebook. A Map to the Sun was 368 pages, which I read physically as a graphic novel. Their Troublesome Crush was 143 pages as an ebook. Sherlock Frankenstein, I found some different numbers, but um, this I read as an ebook graphic novel, and it was about a, either 128 or 152 pages. And then the last thing I finished as that audiobook was Convenience Store Woman. I listened to it as an audiobook, but it was 172 pages. I'm really exhausted just because I've been reading now eight books, <laughs> but. I had so much fun and I feel like that was a nice little cap to this. So overall I did read eight books and if you consider them all as like physical books and as Sherlock Frankenstein as 152 pages, um, it was 1,058 pages, which I feel like is a lot. Eight books technically is what I sometimes read in a month. I liked this. I liked doing this a lot. It was really nice to feel like I had a bit of catch up. I officially reached my 50 like 50 percent mark on my goodreads goal because of this because technically like all these counted as books which i would say they're books it was a great feeling when uh, for a long time now i have felt like i just keep reading okay things and not finding really good books and i felt like almost almost the entire time 
I was just really happy with what was going on. I hope you really enjoyed this experience as well. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books or if you're now interested in any of them. And if you made it this far in the video, leave a little cat emoji because it's pretty much just been like me and Bento all weekend. She is my emotional rock right now and she takes a very cute nap beside me. Let me know if you'd like to see this again or if you'd like to participate in this next time and I can make it more of like an official thing. But aside from that, I will see you next time. Bye.